And I want to read you a prophetic word that Pastor Greg released during our time of prayer on December the 13th. He said this. He was just under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And he said, I hear a trumpet in the heavens. No. Wait. I hear trumpets. Many trumpets. Because the Lord our King is about to make a decree. First, tell my bride, the church, barrenness is broken. Barrenness is broken. Barrenness is broken. Come on. If you have an area that's been barren in your life, come on. God is declaring it's a time of the super bloom. Barrenness is broken. Say that with me. Barrenness is broken. As he is breaking barrenness, he is decreeing that he is placing his left hand under the, the head of her, his bride, and with his right hand, he is stirring up that which is in her of spirit life. The Lord declares, my people, lay hands on your chests. Come on, just lay hands on your chests and begin to thank me for the Holy Spirit, the helper who lives in you. Come on, guys. If we've got the Holy Ghost inside of us, there's nothing we can't face. Thank me for the Holy Spirit, the helper who lives in you. For I would have you to declare what I'm saying to my church, my bride. And the Lord declares, it is time to dance the dance of the Mahanaim. Did I lose you right there? Pastor Greg said, I'm not even sure what this means. But I hear God saying that it's time to dance the dance of the Mahanaim. Put your hand in mine and your arm around me as I embrace you and follow my lead. You do not know this dance. How many figure it out? We don't know this dance. Right? You don't know this dance. But let me lead and guide you, and I will cause an activation in you which has been held until this time. It will cause an appearance to come through you, a supernatural manifestation of who I am. And all those in the world or in the darkness will see and be drawn to it. Remember, we're, we're preparing for a great harvest, a massive awakening, nations being changed, uh, um, a massive revival throughout the earth. And he's saying that the, the people in the world will be drawn to what's inside of you. I am stirring my gifts to be released in my church, my bride for this day. Receive it, embrace it, pass it on. When he prophesied this, it was just like heaven came down in that room. And he said, I don't even know what the dance of Mahanim. It feels like I've heard that before, the dance of the Mahanaim. And as soon as he said it, I knew what it was. Do you remember at the beginning of the year and I took you through the journey of Jacob's life? First of all, God broke his mother out of 20 years of barrenness. Come on, God is breaking cycles. And then he went off and he, after he cheated his brother out of his blessing, after he, you know, got his brother to sell the birthright to him, he was a conniver. Jacob, you know, he was a deceiver, a supplanter. He was not a great guy, okay? Neither Jacob nor Esau were great guys, okay? But God had his hand on Jacob because Jacob had one thing. He loved the land. He loved the covenant with God that his grandfather Abraham had made. He loved and he honored that. God's looking for covenant people today. Remember, he ran and he spent 20 years in the land of Laban. That's where he got his two wives and 11 sons, eventually a 12th son. Spent 20 years there. See, 20 is the year of breaking cycles. How many believe God's broken some cycles this year? <laughs> God's resetting us. That's right. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So that which cannot be shaken will remain. Come on. Laban did nothing but cheat Jacob. All, all that cheating Jacob did, God put him under a, big, a bigger cheater to work the cheater out of him. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes you feel like you're in a bad place. You need to ask God, what are you trying to work out of me? Maybe God puts you under somebody to work something out of you. But after 20 years of having the rules change, having the game change, God said to Jacob, it's time to go back to the land of your fathers and to grab a hold of your inheritance. I'm telling you, we are at that moment right now where God is saying it's time to come out of the past. It's time to leave the past behind and understand that God is moving us into a brand new season. And we've got to come out of that place of Laban where maybe he was a little bit comfortable, but he couldn't have the destiny and the purpose and the calling of God like God had destined for him. 
So he got in the middle of the night because he knew Laban wasn't going to bless him. He took his wife and his, his children and all the, 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 the cattle and the flocks that he had, and he escaped in the middle of the night. And when Laban found out about it, Laban came after him. Remember? He was mad, and he came after him. Guess what? Sometime during this year, something from your past has probably tried to come after you. That's what happens when you're transitioning into a new season. Your past tries to come after you and hold you. Do not let Laban hold you in a past season. Yeah, he'll cheat you out of your destiny. He'll try to speak to you, try to define you, try to limit you. God's saying, I'm breaking you out of limitations this year. Amen? That's what Laban was. Laban was a place of limitation. So Laban comes and, and says, why did you do this? God actually meets Laban in a dream and says, leave Jacob alone, okay? And so they actually part ways kind of with a, a, a truce between them. And from there, Genesis chapter 31, that's Jacob and Laban. Genesis 32, Jacob moves on in his journey to go back and to meet his brother Esau. Now, he's not feeling so great about himself. He's kind of troubled because he doesn't know if Esau's going to kill him, kill his wife, kill his children, Esau probably is mad at me for what I did to him 20 years ago. Okay? Here he is facing his past again. Okay? <laughs> so as he's traveling back, getting ready to know that he's getting ready to confront Esau, he comes to this place and he sees angel armies camped all over his promised land. He sees a camp of angels. And it says the angels met him. The angels met him. And Jacob named the place Mahanaim, which means the place of a double camp. In other words, one camp on earth, a second camp of heavenly armies. Come on, one camp in the human realm, one camp in the spirit realm. And what were the angels doing? They were watching over the inheritance that Jacob had left 20 years before. They were watching over the land. I believe there's angels watching over the land. I believe there's angels watching over your land, over your promise, over your destiny. And we've got to learn how to partner with angel armies now more than ever before. It says, Greg, Pastor Greg said, we've got to learn to dance the dance of the Mahanaim. We've got to learn how to dance the dance of earth, earth and heaven being joined together in a heavenly dance. We've got to learn how to move when God moves. We've got to learn to let him lead. We've got to learn to walk with his cadence and walk with his heart. We've got to learn to understand that we've got to operate in this natural realm, but we've also got to learn how to operate in the spiritual realm. I believe this is going to set a course for us for 2021. It says the angels of the Lord met him. That word met him is the word paga, and it's the word for intercede. There was heavenly intercession that was going on so that Jacob would fulfill his destiny. I'm telling you, there's heavenly intercession, not just earthly intercession. There are heavenly intercessors that are watcher angels that God is stirring up in this season of time, saying, I will bring my people into their destiny. I will watch over the land. I will watch over America. I will watch over my church. My ecclesia is coming forth in this season of time, now more than ever before. And the angels of God are actually interceding for us. They are paga for us right now. They are meeting us on our path. You are not alone. Come on. You are not alone. The Holy Spirit is in you, but the angels of God have been sent to meet you on your path of destiny. You know what happened next? Jacob went right from that place to the place that became known as Penuel, where he wrestled with an angel. And after that place of meeting the angels, he went to the place where he met the Lord face to face. And God said to him, what is your name? What is your name? When he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go until you bless me. And the Lord said to him, well, what is your name? And it says in the Amplified, it says, and with somewhat of a shock, he said, my name is Jacob. Jacob. Realizing that his name meant deceiver, 
supplanter, conniver. Come on, all the stuff from the past that wants to define us. God says, not anymore. From this day forward, your name is Israel. You're a prince with God because you've contended with man, you've contended with God, and you have prevailed. I want you to stand to your feet and say, I have prevailed.